Hey there, awesome physics students. Let's talk about what happens when you have a velocity vector for a charged particle that's not exactly perpendicular to the uh, magnetic field direction. How does it move? Well, let's return back to the situation where you normally have a uh, velocity vector that is perpendicular to the magnetic field direction. So here's the magnetic field, B, and it points into the screen here. And let's just start with a positive charge and we'll give it a velocity vector that points this way. And so we just use our uh, Lorentz force law, QV cross B, take our right hand, point it in the direction, our fingers in the direction of QV, that points that way. B points into the screen, we push our fingers, uh, the QV vector into B, then the force points up, and so it's gonna curve around. This trajectory of this particle is gonna be a circle around the uh, magnetic field line. So the magnetic field lines are this, uh, pointing into the screen and the, mag and the path of the particle is uh, in circles around the magnetic field lines. So if you want to visualize this in, uh, in a different plane here, let's say we have our magnetic field pointing this way, and let's put our uh, velocity um, straight down. And again, this is going to be a positive charge here. And so again, we take the fingers of our right hand, point them in QV, B points that way, so I push it in there, and my thumb points into the screen, and so this is going to curve around like this, and so if we visualize the magnetic field line is pointing that way, this is going to uh, uh, travel around the, in a circle around the magnetic field line. So let's get back to our original question. What happens when the velocity comes in here with some component that's it's somewhat, it's not exactly perpendicular, but it's not parallel either. Well, in that case, what you want to do is think about there's a part of the velocity vector that is perpendicular to the magnetic field line, and then there's part of the velocity vector that's parallel to the field. And this part of the velocity vector that is parallel to the field is unaffected by the force. That's the important point to remember about all of this. Okay. So the perpendicular part, of course, still comes down like this, and that's still going to cause it to turn around like this in circles around the magnetic field line, but it's also going to have this uh, component of the velocity parallel to the field that's going to cause it to drift along in the direction, in this case, in the direction of the magnetic field. And so while it's turning in a circle, it's also going to be drifting, and that's going to create a shape, let me just draw it here for clarity, that's uh, best described as a helix or a corkscrew, if you want to think of it that way. It's a circle combined with a drift motion here. Now, why is this important? Well, this is important because if you think about what happens on the Earth, the Earth is a, a giant magnet, and at the geographic North Pole, we have a magnetic South Pole, and at the geographic South Pole, we have a magnetic North Pole. And so we get field lines that come out like this. They come out of the uh, magnetic north pole and into the uh, magnetic south pole, like so. And you get charged particles from the sun in space. And let's just think about a positive charged particle here. And they often come with velocity components that are not totally perpendicular or completely parallel to the field lines. And so remember what happens is the perpendicular components cause it to twirl around the uh, field line, but then the parallel component, the component that's in the uh, parallel or anti-parallel to the field line, will cause it to drift along the field line. And so what happens is this spirals around the field line, and they will continue to do that until they hit something. Now, in this example, they're going to hit. It's going to hit the atmosphere just above the geographic North Pole. That causes what we call the aurora or the aurora borealis or the northern lights. You get these charged particles that crash into the Earth's atmosphere, and there's a cascade effect that creates lights that you can see in the sky. And as you probably guessed it, if the particle comes in in a diff slightly different trajectory, it's going to follow the magnetic field line and crash into the South Pole. And indeed, there is an Australia Borealis, uh, or excuse me, a Aurora Australis, that is in the southern hemisphere or the southern lights, and uh, that's because that's where the 
magnetic field lines intersect the Earth's atmosphere. Um, you don't get them at the equator because these field lines don't intersect the Earth's atmosphere. Now, so far we've been talking about positive charges here. What's the difference if you have a negative charge? Well, if you go back to this example here, instead of uh, twirling around the magnetic field line in one direction, if it's negative, it's just going to go the other way. So if it's clockwise for positive charges, it's going to be counterclockwise for negative charges. But remember that the uh, velocity component that's parallel to the field line is still going to be unaffected for the same reasons. And so it's still going to drift in the same direction as before. And so positive or negative charges, as long as they have a velocity vector that has a component that's parallel to the field, they will crash into the northern hemisphere here. Or if they have a, a component that's slightly parallel here, then it will crash into the southern hemisphere. Um, the only difference between positive charges is whether they spiral around this clockwise or counterclockwise. All right. Hopefully this helps you understand the uh, general motion of a charged particle in a magnetic field is a helix. And that results in these beautiful uh, lights at the poles. All right.